Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 59. Greetings, students. Today we're going to do one of John's favorite kinds of lessons where we're going to take something that we already know how to do and we're going to take one step backwards and make it just a wee bit more complicated. The process that we're doing this with is our old friend substitution, which we've been doing for a while now. Remember, it's how we solve a system of equations by plugging one equation into the other. And we've always done it with a pair of equations that look something like this. Copy this down. Okay, this is a good example of what we've done. We have one equation that has an x plus a y equals some number, right? And then the other equation is set up so that one of the variables, it can be the x or the y, it doesn't matter, is by itself, all by its lonesome on one side of the equation, we usually see it on the left, and then everything else is shoved to the other side. That makes it really easy to find the x in the first part and go, okay, you need to go in there, right? Now, John was babying us a little bit. That was kind of a training wheels thing because he had this one all set up cute and perfect for us. Now we're gonna have to do a little bit of this work to get it ready by ourselves. And there are three, I believe there are three examples in this lesson. Here's the first one. Okay. All right, so this is a little, this one looks a little bit different, doesn't it? The second equation, that looks normal, x, y, plain number, but this one does not look all cute and perfect like that. Now, here's what's important. What we do is we look for the term that has a letter but no number. Boom, there it is, right? That's got a minus two, that's got a positive two, that's got a minus three. These guys are not good candidates to be our substitution letter. This one is because it's by itself, no number. So what we wanna do is we wanna kick all of this part over here, swim, I should say, we don't wanna kick it. And then we'll be in good shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two y to both sides. So I'll have two y minus one over there. See how I did that? I just swam the minus two y across, the minus one stays there. Now, x is by itself and we're all ready to go. From here on out, the problem is exactly the same. That's the only thing that's new and different. Oh, John, you tease us. All right, so let's just practice doing this and substituting it in. This is x. We're gonna substitute that. There's the x there, so we rewrite this equation with an empty space, parentheses there. Two, and that's where we'll write the x, minus 3y equals 4. And then the x is equal to 2y minus 1. This is all exactly the same. If you're like, what is she doing that's different? I'm done with that part. All right, then we will distribute. Right? Now... Let's see, we've got like terms. We can mush those together and then we'll add two at the same time. Right? So 4y minus 3y is just plain y. Those cancel and then we have y equals 6. Oh, so easy, right? Um, and now all we need to do is plug this y value back into one of our original equations so that we can solve for x, but here's the cool thing. It can be any version of these original equations. So we can use this one, which John often calls this. He calls this a, and he calls this b, and he'll call this a prime. He'll put like a little apostrophe by it, kind of. That's what that meant, is meant to look like. Sometimes he'll use that format to show this is another version of equation a, but this one's ideal, right? Because we can put in x equals 2 times 6 minus 1, and that will get let us calculate it really easy. This is 12, so we get y equals 11. And then we can write it as an ordered pair, 11, 6, and that's the right answer. 
Yay. Not so bad, right? The only thing that was new is we just have to fix this. All right, let's try the next one. Bum, 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 bum. Ready? Here we go. He's got a, another slight trick up his sleeve for us. Let me copy down. I always think of this class I took in college when I'm copying the problem like this because I remember how frustrating it is to keep up in your own notes when the instructor is going really fast. And I think about that because I know I go too fast all the time. Sorry, you guys. I just get excited. Um, but I had this teacher. Okay, do you guys know what overhead projectors are? They were the old school way of where you'd take a piece of plastic and you'd write on it with a special marker and then you'd lay it on a machine and the light would come up behind it and project it onto a screen on the wall. Um, we didn't have laptops. We had cool things like overhead projectors. They're really fun. But, so so some instructors would, would write on those, right? Instead of like writing on a whiteboard or having a PowerPoint, which is what you do now, they would put these plastic sheets on and then they would write their notes on that so that everybody could see it. And the cool thing was it made it much bigger when it was up on the wall. I was a teaching assistant in college for my accounting classes. I was an accounting major and I got to be a teacher and it was really fun. And I got to write on my um, overhead projector plastic things all the time. But I took a class on insurance, which was required for my major. And... That teacher cheated. What he did was he would take those plastic sheets ahead of time and he would write all of the notes out in tiny little print and ahead of class. And then when we were all there sitting down and ready to lecture, he would take this piece of paper with all of this handwritten text on it, slap it down, and then we would all just like fiercely dive in and start copying everything, right? No one was listening to him. It was way too much writing. And then before we even had a chance to get halfway, he'd pull that sheet off and all the words would disappear. And the whole class would go, ah, you know, we would all freak out. And then he'd be like, oh, you weren't done yet? I'm like, dude, that was like 500 words on that screen. No, we're not done with it yet. So I always think about that class when I'm writing my problems because I know I go too fast. But at least I don't go as fast as my insurance professor. If that makes you feel any better. Probably doesn't, but... That's the story. Okay, we're looking at this. We're looking for a good way to rearrange this so we can substitute. Again, we're keyed in, we clue in on a letter that doesn't have a number. There it is. That's the only letter that doesn't have a number, but boop, boop, boop. Um, submarines would be a terrifying place to live, don't you think? You know when those alarms go off in a submarine? Have you heard them in a movie? They strike the fear of God in me. Um, and that's what I heard in my head. I heard a submarine alarm uh, over that minus sign. So if you're feeling a little claustrophobic, so am I. So what I'm thinking is I want to rearrange this so that that minus sign goes away. So what I want to do is I want to swim the Y to this side, which means we're going to have to take the 10 and swim him over. Now I could write this out typically the way I do where I'm subtracting from both sides or adding to both sides, whatever. But as we're getting more proficient in algebra, we can take some mental shortcuts. And what we do is we remember a rule that says change sides, change signs. So that means that this 2x is going to stay the same. When I bring this positive 10 over here, it's going to become a negative 10. And when I bring this negative y over here, it's going to become a positive y. I have done my algebra carefully without writing the step because I remembered the change sides, change signs rule. It works really well if you're feeling careful and precise. If you find yourself using that rule but still making mistakes, go back to the old way. But I will from time to time use that rule to shortcut. Okay, now the Y is on the right rather than the left. That's fine. As long as it's by itself, we can substitute. And there it is. I'm so happy. Now we're going to put it in right there. So I'm going to write the rest of equation B. 4x minus 3 times something equals 16. And then there's the expression for y, 2x minus 10. Yay! We'll distribute. Notice I'm distributing a minus 4x. This will be minus 6x. And then it will be plus 30, won't it? 
equals C X a team. All right. And then let's see this will we can add like terms. Oh wait, I added the wrong two. Those two go together and we'll subtract 30 from both sides. This becomes minus 2x. That cancels. And this becomes minus 14. Make sense? It's a little creepy because we have the negative numbers, but when we divide by the minus 2 over here, this is going to clean up nicely, and we'll get x equals 7. And again, one of the joys of substitution is that it's super easy to plug in and solve for your other letter. It always works out beautifully, but we'll go y equals 2 times 7 minus 10. 2 times 7 is 14, so y equals 4. And I'll write my answer up here, 7, 4. Yay! Is that the right answer? Yes. Did I smiley face this one? Yes. Okay, good. All right. And there's one more. There's one more, you guys. All it is is it has slightly bigger numbers, but it's no harder. Example 59.3. Here we go. 4x minus 2y equals 38. I'm thinking of that insurance professor again. I'm sorry. I think of it every time. 2x plus y equals 25. There's our system of equations. We John later will give us a chance to choose whether we want to do substitution or some other techniques that we'll learn. But for right now, we know it's just always substitution. There's our happy y. We're going to have to subtract the 2x, so it's going to be y equals minus 2x plus 25. It helps if we keep them in descending order, if we keep the x first and then the number. It helps when we distribute. It's just a little more logical. So I always keep that order. All right, and then we're going to use this and plug that value in. So it's the y. So we do 4x minus 2 equals 38, and then this goes in there. Notice that there are numbers, whoops, I was distributing that in my head. I see that's going to be 50. I almost wrote 50 in there. I was getting too excited. Uh, this one has slightly bigger numbers, but it's the same. It won't scare us or hurt us. We distribute. Again, we take special care that we're distributing a minus. So we get 4x plus 4x minus 50 equals 38. Cool. Add like terms. Add 50 to both sides. 8x equals 88. Mm, I like it. So we get, I'm going to write it way up here. X equals 11, right? I should do this just to be completely above board. Okay, now we plug this into that, and it's y equals oh, minus 2 times 11 plus 25. So that's minus 22 plus 25. y equals 3. And so our final answer is like that. Yay! So... To sum up what we learned in this, this lesson, we learned that A, John can be a bit of a tease because he's making us back up, right, from what we were doing before. He's giving us one more extra thing to do. And we learned that it's not hard. All you have to do is look at your system of equations for the letter that doesn't have a number, right? If he's got a minus sign, that's easy enough to fix. Just swim him. But we need to have a guy with no number. Later, we're going to learn what do you do if they all have numbers in front of them? How do you deal with that? It's not a problem. Okay, that's all. I'm going to see you soon for lesson 60. Goodbye.